Number four from the 2006 High Maths Paper 1, a little reconciliation question. Only three marks. Here's a reconciliation. State why it's got a limit and what's the limit. Well, first of all, it doesn't matter what this u naught equals 4 means. That's simply a starting point. If you were to think of this sequence here, you'd have u naught. I'll just put a naught there. And then the succeeding terms. And if you were to plot them, you'd have, that simply says the first term is a 4. Now, sometimes the first term is u1, u2, u3. u naught is quite a common, common one to use in a time sequence, because u naught means the initial value when the time is 0. Whereas if it was just an ordinary sequence, you'd probably call it 1, 2, 3, 4 for the positions of the terms. Now, if you were to follow this, multiplying it by, by point 0.8 and adding 12, then u1 would be about 15 or so. I'll just put a wee note there. It's actually more than 15, but approximately 15. u2 would be 24. u3 would be 31. And these numbers are getting closer together. There's a difference of 11 here. There's a difference just of 9 there. There's a difference just of 7 there. These are tapering off. If I was to draw a curve through it, these are going to level off and reach a limit. It will reach a limit when the difference, which is 0.2 of the preceding number, is the same as that 12. Because if you multiply by 0.8, that's the same as subtracting 0.2 of the number. These are all zigzags. You start at 4, you drop it down by 0.2 and then you add 12. You drop it down by 0.2 you add 12. You drop it down by 0.2 and you add 12. You'll reach a limit when, when you drop it down, the amount you drop it down by is the same as 12. Now that's only going to happen if you're multiplying by a fraction. And the first mark, forgetting all this, the first mark, well not forgetting all that, don't enter any of this down. The first mark is simply for stating why's it got a limit? It's got a limit because you're multiplying by a proper fraction. So you can simply say a limit exists, but you didn't need to write that, but you should. A limit exists as, now how would you write that point eight as a proper fraction? Simply with this little inequality, since it's less than one and greater than negative one. That's the mark for part A. Now don't write, it's a limit, it has a limit because A is less than 1, greater than negative 1, because you remember this little expression from your revision notes or so on. No, you have to show that you know what this means. You have to show you know that this A is this multiplying number, and that the multiplying number has to be a proper fraction. So you wouldn't get a mark if you simply wrote that down. Now, you can either go through it formally, or you could put down the formula. The formula, L equals B over 1 minus A, comes from the fact that you'll reach the limit, you'll have reached the limit, when the following answer is the same as the previous answer. You'll have reached the limit when UN plus 1 simply equals the previous one UN. And it'll happen thereafter, and that will equal that number L, the limit. Which means that you could take your expression and replace them with the limit L. So you could say at the limit L, but again you probably need to do that, at the limit you'd have L would equal point A of L plus 12. And then go through the arithmetic, take that across and subtract. So that means point 2 of L equals 12. So L will be 12, I should have mentioned that statement there is worth a mark. And then finding L gives you the final mark. So it will be 12 divided by 0 0.2. So that means that the limit's going to be able, 2 into 12 is 6, multiplying top and bottom by 10 makes that 60. That's the mark for the limit. So for this first part, this statement, don't depend anything down here, that statement alone is sufficient. Later on, you may want to be more precise and a more precise way of stating that, but again, you wouldn't do it here in the higher because you get the mark just for the statement. A more precise way of stating that first line would be this. would be saying, as n tends to infinity, un would tend to un plus 1, which would tend to a limit. And then, so now that allows you to do that substitution, which means that l 
equals 0.8 of L because they all become the same at the, at, as n goes to infinity when they level off. The alternative to doing that would be to put in the formula L equals B over 1 minus A which tends to be frowned on in the Martin schemes. Certainly putting that down on its own gets no marks. You have to show you understand what the different parts mean. So to get the first mark you'd have to put the numbers in. You'd say well B you can always put this down and say, put this at the side here, where un plus 1 equals a un plus b. And then you can say, well, when b, that means b is 12, and a is the point 8. Still, you don't have to put this part down. That gets you a mark using the formula. I always think that's better because it shows an understanding of how a limit exists. And that certainly is the primary method they're looking for. Formula figures, you don't get a mark until you get the figures, then as before just carry out that calculation. L will be same as before, 12 divided by 0.2 which has to be 60 for the second mark.